first reported in the St. Clair River in 1990. Invasive round gobies quickly spread throughout all five Great Lakes, the St. Lawrence River, and other connected waters, and has since altered the food web structure for smallmouth bass and other species. Throughout my underwater explorations, I've learned that goby population densities vary and are regional. For instance, I don't see as many gobies in Lake St. Clair as I do in bays off Lake Michigan. And I wonder if bottom substrate or predator populace may have something to do with that. My observations have been that the majority of these bottom dwellers prefer rocky areas when available. Here they can perch on top of the boulders, yet hide in the crevices. Lake Michigan's Grand Traverse Bay is one of those regions where there seems to be an overabundance of gobies, so thick that we often snag them when bouncing the bottom. And when working a hula grub across the rocks, that's not all we come in contact with. There we go, there we go. Ah. He popped it once. <laughs> Ooh, nice fish too. Ah, they're fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Hula grub fish. <laughs> he was holding on those shallower rocks. Yeah. Hi guys, welcome back to Hook and Look. Today I'm accompanied by some young blood. My friend Owen Henschel. Already at the age of 21, this youthful go-getter has acquired his captain's license, a commercial driver's license, is a certified diesel mechanic, and has won several fishing events in the Traverse City area. Pretty impressive to say the least. Fishy, fishy, fishy. There's a fishy, fishy, fishy. Ooh, that's a decent fish. Decent fish. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Very good, yeah. Owen. Lots of fun. <laughs> Look at him in that water. <laughs> Never give up. Swim up to the right. There. There you go. Awesome. All right. Good job. Nice. Yep. Good job. We're getting better. Awesome, man, they just eat those little grubs yep. like crazy. Beautiful. They, can, they cannot resist it. It's like a little lobster down there. The double tail hula grub is one of the greatest soft plastic baits Yamamoto ever poured. Rigged with a 3 8 ounce football head, its enticing action on the fall in this crystal clear water draws the bass from a great distance. When shaken in place, then popped, emulates a crayfish scooting, and it's irresistible to smallies, especially when there's an overabundance of gobies. It's a genetic fact that smallmouth go cray-cray over crayfish. Why eat fish when they're serving up lobster? Here we go. He was on that boulder right there? <laughs> yep. Ooh, that's a little better. <laughs> Look at them in the water. Oh man, so pretty. See ever. I am liking <laughs> this. It'll be interesting when I get in the water. I mean, we know there's gobies all over the place in these rocks. It's got to be. Yep. But I want to see if there is crayfish hanging underneath them. Yeah. Because I mean, smallmouth absolutely love crayfish. There we go. Another Traverse Bay smaller. Upon entering the water, it didn't take long to confirm there was an overabundance of gobies present. This area we were fishing is a lengthy expanse of rocks and boulders with patches of milfoil mixed in. The rocks are as shallow as two feet and the outer edge transitions to sand at a depth of about 10. As this fish approached, I noticed he was styling some jewelry. A fish jaw tag had been crimped under its chin, 
most likely from a DNR study. Although we caught a couple around the shallow boulders, these small mouths are cruising the outer edge, seemingly on the prowl. So I thought this would be a good time to capture strike shots and directed Owen to make a cast. The moment his hula grub hit the bottom, it was encircled by gobies. Then they followed it as he worked it along, and so did the smallies. Now this is a good example of when the competition escalates, smallies become frenzied. At this point, Owen's grub stuck on the rock, but I noticed he continued to shake it in place, so I zoomed in. When I did, his grub popped free and one of the other small mouths darted in and engulfed it. How cool was that? Now that's what we call the hook and look experience. And Owen was eager to try that again. He's right in front of me. Let's catch this thing. <laughs> He's a fighter, holy cow. Capturing underwater strike shots is both fun and informative. Before I close, I want to point out that after rolling some boulders, I never did find any crayfish, only more gobies it would be extremely difficult to detect the amount of bottom-hugging gobies present with your electronics. That's where deploying an AquaView camera comes into play. Thank you, Owen Henschel, for your assistance, and thanks to all of you who watched the entire video. Be sure to check the product links listed below the video description.